Hi folks, Bob Moffat, Ram Nation 58 on Instagram and TikTok. Today I'm running a Everlast Cyclone 200E. I have the Rascal plugged into 230 volt input and I'm gonna do a, a pipe procedure here. Imagine if I had a hundred of these Rascals to make up. Would we do them all in position, roll them around? No, I'm gonna kind of semi-automate them and put them on the position or turntable here. It's essentially welding I want to say about 10, 11 o'clock over here, the pipe's rolling away from me. Uh, technically, it's in and around the flat position, downhill route, whatever. Uh, I'm going to change values after the route. I want, I'm attempting to get 100% root fusion on the, on the first pass, but I'm going to create a problem here. And the problem is I'm going to forget the grind out attack. And I'm gonna come down and just kind of bump into it like, a, like I'm gonna fuse through it, but it's not gonna fuse through it. It's gonna create a, a problem on the inside of the pipe. So we're gonna show that and we're gonna show how to fix it as well. Uh, gas metal arc welding does not have a, an arc force per se, like stick welding and cellulose electrode. So it's more about the fit up and the prep. I have, the one I'm gonna roll here is two and a half inch pipe. I have the inside clean, that's important. I have a root face clean, that's important, and a, a, uh, about a sixteenth to, uh, I'm going to say about a sixteenth of root face on here. And I like to fit them up with a, a strong eighth on this, uh, on this size pipe. I bypass the power set mode and I'm going with my own settings here and I've, I ran some test beads and I like, for 030 wire, I like 18.5 and 235 on the wire feed speed. That's what I like, that's what I'm seeing here. So, so I created this problem mostly on purpose, but I may have created another one by accident. And uh, the old music stand I was using over here a minute ago, that may not have been the most wise move on my part. So I've traded it out for this jack stand, a little more sturdy. Now, I bumped into this tack. We've got a nice picture of how they just kind of, they bump into it and just leave a void in there. I like to cut these out with a cutoff wheel. I can cut this and I'm, what I'm looking for is that void or separation, but I want to shave into it so it's, it's almost through the root and it's turning blue. It's just super thin. When I get into larger pipe, I use an eighth inch wheel. So I'm going to go into this and I'm going to make some cuts and I'm going to start angling my blade a little bit like rebeveling down in there. Okay. I've cut into this quite a ways. It's got a little bit of a feather on the leading edge. I'm confident I'll melt that, but here's what I've learned. Two things. First thing you do not want to do is take that cutoff wheel and just sink it right into the, right into the root. What you just created was a very, very thick root face. Well, if you had a problem to begin with because of too thick a root face or something that you couldn't melt out, you just created another one and it's in its worst situation. So don't sink your blade and just shove it into the into the groove there and cut it out because it'll make two real thick root faces. The other one is this. As you get down in there low enough, you start cutting through it. Sometimes you, you punch through it either by accident or you meant to. Be careful of any burrs that are on the inside of the pipe. I've seen some beautiful repairs and then we shoot an x-ray of it and you got two razor blades on either side of the uh, weld on the inside and the x-ray techs pick up on it and they go, oh, you got, a, you got a bad weld. And you do. They don't know what that is. Uh, they see straight lines and they get alarmed. So anyway, make sure that you reach inside with a tool or something. I've used uh, hacksaw blades where I hook it with the teeth. I've made tools where I hook them and just make sure you get them out of there. Now, I believe we are ready to commence our run. However, I'm confident that nothing is gonna move. We've got enough of a root pass in here. We've got a tack over here. If we start welding, I can feather this next tack and the, the fit up won't change. So that's what I'm gonna do here is take this tack and feather it out. It just disappeared. Uh, and I'm gonna leave it at that. So, I, cause I wanna leave this last tack over here and then I'll grind this out and grind that tack and the start out. When we close this up, it'll be 100%. I don't want it to move around anymore. Now I gotta back up or go forward. What do you want me to do? 
What do you want me to do? I'm going to go around. Uh, you might think that this is extremely easy, and it is. It is. However, have I made a bad weld and roll out? Yeah, I have. I really have. I'm going to put a gold dot on top of a gold dot. How about that? This right here. Now that should bring that out a bunch. You know what that is? I need to tell everybody. Hey, tell everybody that's piping porosity. When you terminate a weld in a wide gap like this with MIG or TIG, it freezes so fast that it sucks a hole in it. And what you see is just a little bitty hole, but it might be laying, geometrically, it might be laying back at an angle somewhere, and you think, oh, we shoot an x-ray of it right on top of it, it's a little bitty hole. If you look at it from another angle, and it might be an elongation, it might look like a quarter inch long. I mean, it's, you've got to know that they're there. Right. I'm trying to teach you something up there. Anyway, here's what I'm gonna do with this. I'm gonna lightly touch it. It did not disappear. It's still in there. So that tells me that that, that goes all the way through the root. And that's normal. That's just things that happen. The way to avoid that is to, if you're gonna terminate the weld, draw your bead up onto the bevel face and it cools off slower. You're using the mass of the pipe, especially do that in TIG. I still see part of it, but I've ground down so much that it's super thin. And now I'm gonna go after this tack and the start. If you're doing long sections of pipe, oh, that's a beautiful root. Oh my goodness. If you're doing long sections of pipe, it's a good idea. If, you, if you've already stopped, it's a good idea to look inside. If you left yourself a window, you can see inside pipe all the way around. Before you close it up, it's a good idea to look in there. So essentially this becomes a two pass weld on this uh, two and a half inch schedule 40 pipe. It's a root. And I have cleaned, I went in with a thin bladed grinder and I cut along the edge of the toe to clean out any glass deposits. I didn't grind a whole lot out. What I ground was more of the center so that it's flat. I don't like to do a bunch of grinding on the edge and leave a hump in the middle. That doesn't work out for me so well. Uh, unless I'm running flux cord, running it hot. So I have, I have turned the machine up. I'm gonna run 325 and 21.0 volts. 21 volts, 325 on the wire feed speed. And again, I'm up here, up tall here, I'm pretty much welding down flat. Now, I, I do have an option to turn the machine down and weld more over on the side and going uphill. But this is, again, this is for speed, ability. We've changed one value. If we did this and kind of perfected our numbers, we'd be flat flying and making a bunch of money. So, little half moon job right there. We can go for circles. We, we mess around long enough, and we finished the weld. <clears throat> Had to get those sound effects in there. For the effort, you know. So, we produced this weld here by rolling on a positioner.
turntable, whatever you want to call it. We did a root pass and we did a cap, and that's all that's literally necessary on this thickness of pipe. 030 wire. I used to sit down and do miles of this. This is like prefab, where we're doing an elbow to a flange or anything that we can roll, short pup to elbow something. It, you need to do them, you need to do them quick. You make so much more money on them. You do a repeatable process. Uh, you get to the field, you do a field installation. It's a manual weld in position. Short arc, everybody thinks, oh, you're, you know, that'll never pass x-ray and that'll never pass bin test. Well, it will, we've proven it thousands and thousands of times. But the whole point is, this little guy right here, uh, man, this thing will hump. This thing gets after it. It's got good arc features. I think it's simple, I think it's very effective. I think it's a cool little machine. Uh, I wanna do a uh, flux core, gasless flux core wire on it just to see how it's gonna run. I'll switch polarity, but I, I really wanna run this wire and see what happens. I may even bring in one of my students. Uh, she does a lot of uh, fit and fab and does some stuff in drag racing. So, not that she'd do one of those on, a, on an actual car, but I'm talking about any of the support equipment. So, be a fun little, fun little experiment. So, Bob Moffat, Ram Nation 58, weld mean, weld green, behave.